Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and today I'm going to do something um, fairly basic but a little bit tricky. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a French baguette. So this was requested a while ago by AJ Doman and um, you know he wants us to prove that uh, you can actually make a decent baguette in a domestic oven. Of course you can. <laughs> And a couple of shout outs, one to my new Patreon super fan, Chris. Yay! <laughs> uh, and also, um, when I was looking for a, a decent baguette recipe, uh, I came across a YouTube video by a fellow called John Kirkwood. Um, and it's, it's really, really, really good. So basically, I'm doing his recipe. <laughs> with a few minor modifications. Um, so, I'll, but I love his channel, I love his videos. So I'll put a link to his channel at the end because uh, it's it's worth a look. He's got some good recipes on there. Anyway, French baguette, not like any other kind of bread. Uh, and this recipe certainly isn't like any other bread recipe that I've done. But uh, I made it yesterday, it worked okay. Um, so I'll make it again today and it'll be spot on, I expect. Anyway, only one way to find out. Let's do it. Okay, ingredients. There's only four of them. I'm going to make two baguettes. They won't be enormous, but you know, there'll be plenty. Uh, so it, I've got 350 grams of strong white bread flour, 260 ml of water, just under a teaspoon each of salt and active dried yeast. So let's uh, add the yeast. There's this thing about not mixing them together because the salt kills the yeast, but you know, it's, it's tosh. It's not tosh, but I mean, they get mixed anyway, so I don't know why they make a fuss. Mix those together, see? There goes the salt killing the yeast. <laughs> and then just add some water and stir that in. This is going to make a really wet, sticky dough, so um, you know, just just go with it because that's how it's meant to be and don't be tempted at any stage to add well you know in the proving stage don't add any extra flour because you'll just mess up your quantities so we don't need it or anything that's just all the, the ingredients mixed together so now you want to cover this with plastic film and stick it in a warm place for 45 minutes Prove a bit. Now, uh, with this recipe, you need to prove it four times for 45 minutes each, and um, which, and then just mess about with it a little bit in between each proving, um, which seems like an almighty palaver, and it is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's worth it because that that procedure develops the lovely flavour that we're after. So there you go. Right. That's going somewhere warm and we'll be back in 45 minutes. Here's the dough after the first 45 minute rise. Looking quite a lot like porridge. And what we need to do is tip it out and, um, well, kind of knock it back, although it hasn't, you know, it hasn't risen a huge amount. And I think I mentioned it's sticky. And what I didn't mention is I've got a bit of wholemeal flour in there because uh, I ran out of the the white stuff. So that's maybe 10 or 20% of uh, the volume of it. You want a scraper of some sort and you want your hands and you want some water. Wet your hands, wet scraper. And basically try not to handle it too much. So we're knocking the air out. Um, you know, just push it down with your fingertips. Fold it a bit. Probably enough, and pop it back in the bowl. Cover it again and leave it to rise again for another 45 minutes. That's, um, <laughs> risen quite a bit. Uh, so that was the second proving and the same drill, tip it out and just knocking it back and um, pressing it down and folding it a bit. 
So this is looking a lot less like porridge and very much like really marvellous bread dough. So chuck it back in a bowl, cover it, back in the warm place for another 45 minutes. Fourth and final proving. So, oh yeah, this is looking terrific now. We've got lots of big bubbles going on in there. So, wet the hands. And tip it out. And press all those bubbles out. And give it a good thumping. And back in the bowl for the fourth and final proving. Now we're ready for the, the second phase, which is to turn that dough into loaves. So you want flour on your worktop and you want to tip out your dough, which is now magnificently stretchy and oh, amazing. I love bread making. <laughs> so, flour on your paws as well. And we want to knock this back, get all the air out of it again, and divide it in two. Try to turn that into a rectangle, and then fold it over in thirds. And place it on a baking sheet lined with greaseproof paper. And then just get a bit of uh, cling film and spray it with oil. And just place that over the uh, bits of dough. And um, just leave that for about 15 minutes. Now, if you were a French baker or just any kind of baker who makes a lot of baguettes, you would probably have a thing called a couche, which is uh, it's basically just a, a square of heavy duty linen that is used to form kind of troughs to support the baguettes while they're having their final rise. I don't have a couche obviously and you probably don't but I've got a tea towel with a load of flour on it and it's supported on a block of wood at the back so so they don't roll off the table um, and or you could use an old pillowcase or whatever as long as it's clean and won't impart fluff to your dough. One of our bits of dough is still sticky. Flour everywhere. <laughs> and just push that out into a rectangle. Okay and grab one end and fold it over and roll it towards you. Okay and then press down the seam with the this part of your thumb, the heel of your thumb. And I'll just roll that over a bit more and pop it. Oops into your couche and just form form a kind of barricade around the lump of dough and then just cover that oops just form a barricade <laughs> need plenty of flour on on your cloth okay form the barricade and just roll up the end of the sea towel to uh, cover it, stop it drying out, and that needs to rise for about 30 minutes and then we can bake it. So sometime during that 30 minute rise period you want to put your oven on to preheat to 190 degrees Celsius if it's a fan oven or 210 if it's a conventional one or gas mark 7. Um, and how long that takes depends on your oven because all ovens are different. And also you want to put a tray of boiling water in the bottom of the oven because that will hopefully generate some steam which will create the crust that we want on our baguettes. Right, final stage. Um, you want a baking sheet lined with greaseproof paper and lightly spray it with oil. And you want a piece of specialist technical equipment known as a flipping board or a flipping board so that's just a bit of cardboard with tin foil wrapped around it. We need that to transfer our baguettes onto the baking sheet without wrecking them. 
So just pop your flipping board at the edge of the baguette and flip it. Flip it good. Oh, it's stuck. Flipping egg. <laughs> That's why it's called a flipping board. Oh, hum. Okay, and then deposit it. This one's too long. On to the tray. You got the next one. Shall we do a banana baguette? Yeah, why not? Now, uh, you want to spray them with water. Again, this is to do with forming the crust. And then make four score lines at a very sort of shallow angle, like not 45 degrees, more like 15. And then pop that in the oven for eight minutes and then we'll turn it around. Okay, so turn it around. and give it another eight to 10 minutes till it's nicely golden. Okay, I reckon we're done, so let's have a look. <laughs> well, I could have, I should have cut my slashes deeper, but um, and maybe I shouldn't have made that as a banana. <laughs> Apart from that, perfect. So, um, you want to get those on a wire rack to cool down completely and then you can try them. Ah, oh, okay. We have baguettes. Okay, peeps, it's taste of time with Mrs. Keith Goats. Hello, Peckle. Oh, oh you're cold. Yeah. Is it cold out there? Warm. No kind of atmosphere. It's just, just got in. Sorry, rubbish tea, bread and cheese. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's all we get. We had that, didn't we? That that little place up in Tetuan. Do you remember? We ordered a. a oh, the melted of, cheese. It was the melted Spanish ah. cheese, mind. No, it was Italian. In a Spanish bar. I'll bet it was a soft Spanish bar. It was cheese. a Spanish bar that did Italian food. It was a pizza bar. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Lasted about a fortnight. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Oh, yeah. And this is nice. The bread. This I is like... incidental. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it is. No, I like, I like baguettes, but definitely the ones that you get in France and here have got serious bubbles in them. Mmm. And it's not as white, is it? Like commercial baguettes. No, it's not. But this is. No, I it, like it's this. It's about 10% percent wholemeal. Yeah, no, I like this. It, and it doesn't feel sort of like heavy or anything. It's just nice. Oh, wow. That. Bread and cheese. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. -hmm. Good proof. Mmm. -hmm. Sorted. Right then. Um, mm. okay, well, I think that's all we have to say. So if you enjoy this video, give it a like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. And thanks for watching and... <laughs> I need to sit down. <laughs> I need to stand up. See you next time. <laughs> I'm never going to get the choreography right. <laughs> that's because there isn't any. That's lovely. Thank you, Danny. You're welcome.